Hello and welcome to my podcast on the core practical three from unit one. This is investigating the effect of temperature on the permeability of cell membranes. For this investigation we're going to use a beetroot. We're using a beetroot because it has a very distinctive red pigment within inside the cells. And we're going to take a section of the beetroot and we're going to place it into some distilled water and we're going to observe the pigment diffuse out of the cells, across the cell membrane and into the water. There's a few things to note during this investigation, a few things that we are going to need to control in order to make our test valid. These control variables you need to try and identify as I go through the procedure that we're going to use. First thing, uh, we have a beetroot here. There are different varieties of beetroot and it's important that you use the same variety in each of your different temperatures. Obviously different varieties of beetroot may have different permeabilities. The other thing to note is that there are different tissues within a variety of beetroot. Uh, there's leaf tissue there, stem tissue, root tissue. It's also very important that you use the same source of tissue for your investigation. We're going to use this piece of tissue here, which is the part of the root of the beetroot. I'm going to take a sample of that using a corer. You need to get stuck in there, so you will need to push that out there with a pencil. And uh, there is my section of beetroot that I'm going to use from the core there. And you can see already there is some red pigment that's actually come from the cutting process itself. I'm going to show you how to set this up at one temperature, and obviously it's the same for all the other temperatures, you can set that them up yourself. When we're doing the investigation, any investigation we will want a minimum of five different temperatures, a range of temperatures, and also ideally eight temperatures. We're going to use six because it's just easier for us. What I'm going to do now using a ruler is I'm going to cut a section of the beetroot which is one centimetre in length. Be very careful when using a scalpel, very sharp. There is my one centimetre section of beetroot. Very important, you can see that already from the cutting process there is some extract of pigment on the outside of the beetroot. I'm going to rinse that off with some distilled water. I'm purposely using distilled water and not tap water. You might want to think why that is, why would I be using distilled water to rinse off the beetroot and not tap water. Give that a really good rinse. And I'm going to leave that on that tissue there while I set up the rest of the experiment to dry. You can see there in the, in the uh, wash water, the amount of pigment that's actually come off that piece of beetroot during the cutting, very significant amount of coloration there. Okay, so I'm going to set up my water bath now for the temperature. Ideally, we'd be using uh, electric water baths, which would maintain the temperature throughout the length of the investigation and I'm going to have to make a water bath using a beaker, a boiling tube and a thermometer. I've got some hot water. I'm going to aim for a temperature of 50 degrees Celsius. This kettle has been boiled for a couple of minutes so let's see what temperature we get with the hot water. Shooting straight up there and we're just just over 70 degrees Celsius. Now it doesn't matter because this water is not going to come into contact with the beetroot sample whether the water that you use to warm the, the boiling tube is tap water or distilled water. The water in the kettle is actually tap water. I'm just going to use a little bit of distilled water to get that temperature down. It's about 74. I'm going to use a bit of distilled water to get the temperature down to 50 for this particular one. Shooting right down there just over 60, a bit more, sixty-six. And that's a fifty. So if I fifty-one, fifty, perfect. Now if I'd have put a bit too much distilled water in there and it made it too cool, uh, just simply top it up with a bit more hot water from the kettle to, until you get to the temperature you need. You might need to go up, up, down, up, down until you get to the right temperature. 
That is at 50.5 degrees Celsius, which is perfect for what we need. At the moment, the boiling tube shouldn't contain anything. That. Does not contain any liquid. I'm going to measure out five centimeters cubed of distilled water. Again, okay, now I'm purposely using distilled water again. And I'm just getting down to see the meniscus of the water in the cylinder. Slowing down a bit as I get to five. Drop by drop. Perfect. Five centimeters cubed of distilled water. I'm going to add that to my boiling tube. And now I am going to leave that for a minute just to get to the right temperature as the water within inside the boiling tube will come to the same temperature as the water bath surrounding it, which is now just at 50 degrees Celsius. Give this one more rinse before I start. That's all right. Okay. I'm now going to place my beetroot sample within to the temperature and start the stopwatch so I can time how long it's been in there for. I'm going to leave each beetroot section for the same length of time, which is 20 minutes in each of the different temperatures. Ideally, I would do three different samples in each of the temperatures. Therefore, I can make my results more reliable and take an average of the results to come up with a more reliable figure of the permeability of the cell membrane. So it's been exactly 20 minutes since we put the beetroot sample into the distilled water, the 5 cm cubed of distilled water. So it's now time to take it out. Uh, remember they should all be taken out after the same time period. To remove the beetroot, we tried to use some forceps to remove the beetroot piece. Unfortunately they were too uh, short to actually reach. So I'm just going to simply tip it out to a clean beaker and hopefully the beetroot piece will get left behind. If not, I can always remove the beetroot piece from the beaker because it's a lot more shallow. This is no longer required, so I'm going to move that out of the way. We're going to use a colorimeter to investigate the amount of pigment that has come out of the through the cell membrane and into the distilled water that we used earlier. This machine works by emitting a light source through the solution to a sensor on the other side, and it can either work in transmission or absorption. So it can either detect the amount of light that can go through the solution, which is the transmitted light, or it can detect the amount of light that does not get through. This is what we call the absorbed light. We're going to use absorbed light as a measure of the amount of pigment. So the more permeable a cell membrane, the more pigment we would expect to diffuse across the cell membrane and into the distilled water. How will that affect the absorption figure of the light, how much light is absorbed in this machine? Inside the machine there is a, a filter, different coloured filters for different coloured solutions. It's very important that the same filter is used, that will filter out certain wavelengths of light, only allowing certain ones to pass into the solution. Different coloured solutions will absorb or transmit more or less of different wavelengths of light. It's very important that we keep this filter the same with inside the colorimeter. Another thing to note is these things are called cuvettes. These are what we actually put the sample in to actually test the absorption. Very important that you, you make sure that they're very clean. Okay, they can get very dirty depending on what chemicals they've had in them. Very much worthwhile giving them a swill out with the same type of solution that you're going to put into it. And give them a rub on either side with a paper cloth to make sure it's clean. You'll notice that there are some lines down one side. These are the sides that I'm holding my fingers. And then there's clear the other way with a little arrow. You want to try and aim to fill up your solution to the bottom of the little arrow place it into the machine with the arrow for pointing forwards. I'm only going to touch these sides. Think why don't I want to touch these sides, very important. Before we actually measure the absorption of our solution, we need to do a reference sample. This is a sample where you take the uh, solvent that the solution is in and you place it into the machine. This is the distilled water that is a solvent for our solution. Show that bit that rolls out, and I'm going to place that into the machine. Turn the machine on, does help. Make sure it's on absorption, you'll see an ABS down in the bottom corner. And I'm going to press R for reference, and it's come up with a, a value of 0.00. .00. 
What the reference sample does is it takes away the absorption of the water, the distilled water itself. It's a little bit similar to uh, tearing a set of uh, mass balance with the plastic dish on before you actually record the mass of whatever it is you're interested in. It takes away the absorption of the distilled water, leaving behind the result that we get will be the absorption of the pigment. Can we move that then? I'm going to top this up with the solution. And this was at 50 degrees and you can see how uh, ready pink the solution is from the amount of pigment that is diffused out through the cell membrane. Place that into my colorimeter and this time I'm going to press T and we have a value of 0 0.29. So at 50 degrees Celsius the at 20 minutes length of time in 5 centimeters cubed of distilled water the amount of uh, absorption of the pigment in the solution is 0.29. Okay. Uh, we're going to need to compare that later on to the amount of absorption of the pigment in other temperatures uh, to see how that has affected the permeability of the cell membrane. Here we have the six different distilled water and pigment mixtures that the group Mendel did. And you can see there on the left we have ice which was uh, recorded at 1 degree Celsius. Increasing temperature as we go across to the right up to 60 degrees Celsius. There are six different temperatures ranging from 1 degree Celsius to 60 degrees Celsius. You can see there that the pigment gets stronger uh, just visually looking there. However, it is much better to use the colorimeter to give us a quantitative figure as that is much more. So here we have the results achieved by Mendel. This was based on two cylinders of one centimeter in length in each temperature and the results that you see here are an average of those two cores and the amount of light that was absorbed by the pigment in the distilled water after the 20 minute time period. What you need to do is draw a graph of these results and to just describe the graph using the concept of temperature against arbitrary units. Remember to bring into that description how arbitrary units of the absorbed light indicates the permeability of the cell membrane.